we have finally reached the point in the Spyro franchise where everything is new to me. Spyro 4 Enter the Dragonfly was the last Spyro game I played, so before this challenge I'd never played Spyro A Hero's Tale. And honestly, I wish I had. I actually quite like this game. It's different in many ways, but it's a lot better than what I thought it would be. For the most part, at least. Although one thing is still the same, I see Spyro still has those pesky wings. It's a shame then that in my first playthrough ever, we must clip those wings yet again. Can you beat Spyro a hero's tail without gliding? Let's find out. Here are the rules, but first, let me tell you about this video's sponsor, Honkai Star Rail, a space fantasy turn-based RPG from Hoyoverse, the makers of Genshin Impact, that's available to play for free right now on PC, mobile devices, and PlayStation 5. It's an immersive space adventure with over 80 million downloads in its first six months. If you've been on this channel for a while, you know I love classic Final Fantasy games, so to see a high-quality game like this with a turn-based battle system going free to play that's just perfect. The roster of playable characters is over 30, each with their own unique personality and backstory. This also allows you to form your own unique teams and strategies to tackle your enemies as you explore a semi-open world. You'll discover treasure chests, secrets, solve puzzles, and delve into the backstories of NPCs that you'll meet along the way. What's more, the new version 1.5 update introduces an all-new main story set in Bellabog, and it also introduces two brand new 5-star playable characters. The first First is Hoyo Hoyo, an introvert who has the appearance of a teenager, but she seems to have a sentient tail. She's a wind type support character who can both heal and buff her allies in battle. The second character, Argenti, is a chivalrous but silent gentleman. He doesn't speak because if he does, you won't be able to stop yourself from laughing. He's a physical type character who uses a spear and specializes in AoE attacks that look as good as he does. Version 1.5 also includes ghost busting missions and an all new map called Fixtrol Garden. Also, if you log in for seven days, you'll get 10 free rail special passes, which can be used to draw Hoyo Hoyo or Argenti. Download the game using my link in the description and experience these new characters for yourself. Plus, if you use the redemption codes I've included on screen and in the description, you can redeem 50 Stellar Jade. Thank you for checking out Honkai Star Rail, and thank you Honkai Star Rail for sponsoring this video. Back to the rules. Rule number one, we cannot glide or fly as Spyro at all. In fact, we cannot use Spyro's wings for anything in this entire run. Rule number two, glitches are allowed, but no hacking. And rule number three, once we defeat Red, the final boss of the game, we win. As usual, we will be attempting to complete the game 100% just to see how much is possible within these rules. Also, we'll mention that we're playing the GameCube version of the game as well. The game is split into four realms, and when it comes to attempting 100%, we will go through each realm one at a time. There are three main collectibles throughout the game, and these are Dark Gems, Light Gems, and Dragon Eggs. Dark Gems must be found and destroyed, whereas Light Gems and Dragon Eggs can either be found in hidden locations or earned by completing minigames. Many of these minigames will see us in control of Spyro's friends, Hunter, Sparks, Sergeant Bird, and Blink the Mole. Each character has their own abilities, but we'll cover those as and when we play them. Each realm has a homeworld, just like classic Spyro. The first realm is Dragon Kingdom, and its homeworld is Dragon Village. The first thing to mention is that the gems are no longer required for 100%. They are purely the game's currency this time. Having said that, we will still be grabbing as many gems as we can throughout the run, as we will need to purchase a few things. We need to grab 500 gems from the starting area to purchase a key from Moneybags. He will always have a shop set up in each homeworld, and purchasing a key from him acts like a shopping tutorial, since there's no other intended way to advance the game. We can use the key to open a nearby door and proceed to a cave, where we will learn how to double jump. That's right, they added a double jump in this game to give Spyro even more height than ever before. But the double jump uses Spyro's wings. I did say Spyro can't use his wings for anything after all. Which means that in this run, we will also be banning Spyro's double jump. What's more, there's also an ability Spyro can use called the Horn Dive. It's basically the same as a head bash from the older Spyro games, 
only with a different name. It's also the only move that allows Spyro to break the Dark Gems, but in order to perform the Horn Dive, Spyro must double jump first. So the only way Spyro can break the Dark Gems is by breaking our main rule. Not only that, but the game traps us in this cave until we use the double jump to reach a Dark Gem, and then another double jump into a Horn Dive to break the Dark Gem. Only then will an opening be revealed to allow us to escape. So if we enter this cave at this point of the run, we're basically softlocked. Let's start again. We can still grab those 500 gems and buy a key as normal, but instead of using the key to open the door, we keep hold of it. Now, we need to find another way to progress the game without going into that cave. This requires us to learn one of the most difficult tricks in the entire game right at the start of the run. Wall grinding. Wall grinding can be a bit difficult to explain. It's basically a method of gaining extra height in a very unintended way. If Spyro charges in mid-air, he shoots downwards at about 45 degrees, regardless of whether we're holding forwards or not. If we do this while facing a wall, Spyro will charge against the wall until he hits the ground. If Spyro turns slightly to the left or right whilst charging against a wall, the game will automatically rotate Spyro that way mid-charge. This auto-rotate is exactly what we want. If we perform this in a corner, we can get the game to auto-rotate Spyro away from from one wall and into another. This can give Spyro just a little bit extra hang time before hitting the ground. After we auto-rotate towards the other wall, if we then quickly hold down the jump button and leave the left analog stick neutral, Spyro will jump again before he hits the ground. This extra jump is what we call a wall grind. On its own, it isn't very helpful, but we can chain these wall grinds in succession, and we can basically keep gaining unintended intended height until we get over the wall. Of course, this trick is very difficult to get the hang of. One mistake and we lose a lot of height, whereas we only gain a little bit of height with each successful wall grind. A silver lining though, it's impossible to accidentally use the double jump here as we never actually learned it since starting the run over. When we finally get enough height, we need to get over this wall and land safely on the other side. But to reach the ground on the other side, we need to aim a well tied charge, otherwise we'll fall out of bounds. When we finally string all this together, we made it over to the other side of the wall before we were supposed to. I hope you enjoy wall grinds because that won't be the last time we see them. We can interact with the professor over here to open a shortcut door back to the start of the level, so we won't need to perform that particular wall grind again. We can also grab a light gem in this house too. Now we essentially play this level backwards. Also, since we didn't open the door with a key, we're free to use it to open this nearby treasure chest instead for a dragon egg. Keys are a one-time use item, but since opening the key door from earlier was supposed to be part of the tutorial, the game doesn't check if we have a key in our inventory, just that we purchased a key. This means that if we go back to that door now, it will still open despite us not having a key anymore. We don't want to go that way just yet though. We head back through the house to see a small river. It's not deep enough to submerge in normally, however it's time to use a glitch called Ledge Clip. If we grab the edge of a platform, we can pull ourselves up. This is a new feature to the Spyro series, but it can also be abused to get out of bounds. During the animation where we pull ourselves up, we can clip through walls. So we grab the very edge at the top left of this river, and at the perfect angle, we pull ourselves up and clip through the wall on the left. From here, we can land in the river from out of bounds. There's nothing stopping us from submerging here, and thus returns the glitch that has become a staple of the series, the swim in air. We can use this to swim around the whole level and collect all the light gems and dragon eggs we can find. There are limitations though. Spyro cannot open treasure chests whilst swimming in air. He can talk to other characters, but this will end the swim in air. Touching water will also end the swim in air, even shallow water. There's also a Another technique we can use to gain a bit more height and distance with a normal jump, if we do a small hop and then charge into the ground and then keep the charge button and the jump button and forward all held, Spyro will jump again upon landing and he'll jump just a little bit further and higher and cover more distance than usual. We will call this the charge jump. Should we lose our swim in air at any point, we can always return to the river and perform the ledge clip again. We can swim over to where Sergeant Bird is, talking to him 
will remove our swimming air, so we make sure to grab all the collectibles in the area first. Talking to Sergeant Bird will start his mini game, and Sergeant Bird's mini games are basically this game's version of the speedways. In previous Spyro games, we have had to skip all the speedways, as Spyro must use his wings. However, Sergeant Bird plays them now instead, so the speedways are fair game this time. Every mini game that requires us to control a different character can be played twice. Once for a dragon egg, and a second time for a light gem. It's more difficult the second time, but at least we can play these mini games casually. Now, to reach the second level, we're supposed to break a dark gem next to a broken bridge. Breaking it will repair the bridge, but as we mentioned earlier, Spyro must double jump into a horn dive to break them, so Spyro won't be breaking any dark gems in this whole run. What's annoying about this is that breaking the dark gems also counts towards our overall completion percentage. Keep these dark gems in mind though, we haven't forgotten about them. Now, we could easily get swim in air again, swim over the broken bridge to enter the second level, but we're going to swim somewhere else instead, directly into Realm 1's boss fight. Every realm has a boss fight at the end of it, and in the first three realms, the path to each boss fight is near the beginning. Normally, we wouldn't be able to access the boss as there are giant plants in the way, and they won't go away until we've broken every single dark gem in that realm. There are three levels in realm one, with a total of ten dark gem, but so far we've not been able to break any of them. However, we can just use the swim in air to bypass the plants blocking our way, and go straight into the boss fight against Nasty Nork. Defeating Nasty Nork will give us access to Realm 2 earlier than intended. The reason we're skipping levels to access Realm 2 is so that we can learn the Lightning Breath as early as possible. This will prevent some backtracking later on. This boss doesn't require any double jumps or glides to beat him. It would be easier if we could use double jumps to avoid his shockwaves, but it's not necessary. Once he's defeated, Spyro learns Electric Breath, which we can use to power up these nodes to activate certain objects. We can use this to return to Dragon Village. The plants are still in the way since we never removed them, and the cutscene before the boss fight removed our swim in air. However, when we get close to the plants from this side, a cutscene is triggered. This normally plays after defeating the boss anyway, but it has a bonus effect of putting Spyro on the other side of the plants. Also, with the first realm boss defeated, we can now use the big teleporter here to teleport to realm 2. It is possible to teleport to each small shop pad that we discover throughout the game for fast travel purposes, but only the main big teleporters can take us to different realms. Once we arrive in Realm 2, we want to go straight to the Realm 2 boss fight, sooner than intended. The path to the second boss is blocked by a barrier, but once again we can get out of bounds to get around this barrier. It's possible to do this without swimming in air. To the right of the barrier there is a rock with a tree sticking out. We need to use a couple of wall grinds between the rock and the right wall. Once we get enough height, we can charge down slightly to the left and we clip through the wall. With this, it's possible to clip straight into the tunnel behind the barrier, and from here, we can make our way to the Realm 2 boss fight. I personally found this boss to be even easier than the first boss, since less double jumping or gliding seems to be needed. The lasers were pretty annoying though. With that, we unlocked Water Breath. We can use this to turn water wheels to open doors. Some of the upcoming jumps are fairly high up, but we can use the rocks to get some extra height. Since this barrier isn't solid from the back, we can clip right through it and back into the start of Realm 2. From here, we can use the main teleporter to travel to Realm 3, Icy Wilderness. There is a reason that we want to have access to Realm 3 early on, and we'll see why soon. Something else to note, as soon as we enter Realm 3, Spyro will automatically learn all abilities that we would normally learn up to this point, including the double jump. So now we need to actively avoid using it by accident. For now, we will fast travel back to Realm 1, and we purchase a key from the shop. Currently, we can only carry one key at a time, so we will need to get into the habit of buying a key whenever we don't have one. Even if we're not close to the shop, we can still use the shop pads that are scattered all over the game to purchase what we need. These shop pads also act as fast travel points within the realm they're in, so it's best to approach as many of these as we can as we go. Just getting close to a shop pad will activate it, and allow us to teleport here later. 
you never know when we might need to return to areas later. Now, we will get the swim in air again in the same way as before, and then swim over the broken bridge from earlier. This leads to the second level of round one, Crocovile Swamp. Since we're still swimming in the air, we can use this to collect as many light gems and dragon eggs as we can find out in the open all over the level. Keep in mind though, we cannot open treasure chests while swimming. We can even swim out of bounds to clip into some areas, and then reach some collectibles earlier than intended. Once we clip in this room, it looks like we're stuck in here, but the metal door blocking this room is only solid from one side, so we can just swim right out. There's also a light gem inside the structure above, and normally we would use a cannon to break open this part of the structure, but we can just swim at it from underneath with more out of bounds shenanigans. We can't use cannons while swimming in the air anyway. Something to keep in mind as we swim around, interacting with other characters will remove the swim in air glitch, so we need to avoid talking to anyone for the time being. This includes the frog NPC that would normally activate a minigame. Soon we come across a building with a locked gate. Normally we would need to horn dive these buttons outside to open the gate, but as we mentioned, Spyro's horn dive is against our rules due to needing a double jump first. Instead, we can swim into the back of the building from out of bounds to clip inside. But first, we're going to need to use a nearby fairy for a checkpoint. Inside, there's a stone on the floor that we're supposed to stand on to open a door. But if we swim into the stone, it still opens the door. We can swim over the platform obstacles beyond and collect a light gem. Just be sure not to kill all the enemies here. Now, there are some nodes in this building that we want to activate with our electric breath. But unfortunately, Spyro cannot use any of his breath attacks while swimming, not even water breath. So we need to deactivate the swim in air inside this building first. So far, we've mentioned that talking to other characters or touching water will deactivate the swim in air. We can't do either in this cave. There is one more thing we can do though. Some enemies make Spyro do an animation when he gets hit by them. Bigger enemies with axes are a good example, and there happens to be one on this small ledge. We need this enemy to hit us with a specific attack that causes Spyro to get flattened. With that, the swim in air is deactivated. We can now defeat the enemies in our way and use charge jumps to platform our way back to the cave's entrance. We also use our key to open this chest for a dragon egg. Now that we're on foot, we can zap all the nodes here to open another part of the cave. This is an example of why we took the time to get the electric breath early, so that we wouldn't have to backtrack to Crocodile Swamp later. In this section of the cave, we need to chase down a thief for a dragon egg. Just make sure not to fall down to the lower level, as we may not be able to get back up without double jumping. Now we need to get out of this cave, and since we clipped inside from out of bounds, the gate is still closed. We can't just clip back outside either, but since we got a checkpoint outside the cave, we can just death abuse to spawn back outside with all collectibles intact. We're back on foot now, but even then, we can still make it to the end of Crocovile Swamp. Normally, we would need to break a dark gem to meet a dragon in this level who would teach Spyro the pole swing ability. But since we've already entered Realm 3, we can already use the pole swing. The platforming sections can be tricky, but the charge jumps see us through. Soon we find Blink the Mole, another playable character in this game. We can play his section of the level twice, once for a dragon egg and a second time for a light gem, just like with Sergeant Bird's levels. Of course, Blink sections can be played casually, but they're still easily the worst sections in this whole game. If we missed any collectibles, we could always teleport back to Dragon Village, get the swim in air again, and swim all the way back to Crocovile Swamp. Eventually, the only collectibles remaining in the Crocovile Swamp are the three dark gems that we can't break, and the rewards from the frog mini game, and the treasure chests that we can't reach without swimming in air. It seems we can't really rely on Spyro to be able to collect everything without his wings, even with the swim in air. So, we'll just have to play as someone else instead. We're about to perform a series of awkward glitches to achieve our ultimate goal so we'll explain as we go. We mentioned that we can use shop pads to teleport to other shop pads within the same realm. This is because one of the available items for purchase is a teleport ticket. If we buy one, we can then select which other shop pad we want to teleport to, providing we've already been to that shop pad before. You can't use a teleport ticket wherever you want though, only from the shop pads. At least, that's what the developers intended. If we go to a main teleporter in either realm 2 or 3, and press the pause button and the B button at the same time to activate the teleporter and pause the game, then both menus will appear on screen together. If we press the pause button again to unpause the game, we can now move around with the teleport menu still on screen. We now want 
to navigate over to the nearby shot pad. The map is in the way of the screen, but we can just look at getting the arrow onto the red circle. Activating the shop now will overlap the teleport menu and the shop menu. From here, we can select a destination to teleport to. The shop will remain on screen during the loading screen. We want to choose Realm 1 as our destination because we want to carry the shop menu there for another glitch. We want to travel all the way to Blink the Mole in Crocovile Swamp, all whilst the shop menu remains on screen. Our button inputs will register with both Spyro and the shop at the same time. So if we need to jump, we try to highlight items that we either can't afford or items that we can't carry any more of. We once again get the swim in air as before. Swim over the broken bridge to reach Crocovile Swamp and find Blink. Before talking to Blink, we need to make sure to select the teleport ticket from the shop. Doing so will give us a message asking, are you sure? With that message on screen, we approach Blink and press the B button. Pressing this button will both cancel the transaction and talk to Blink at the same time. If we didn't do it this way, then talking to Blink would have removed the shop menu glitch, and we need that for the next glitch. Now, when Blink asks us if we want to explore his section of the level, we need to press the A button three times in quick succession. This will both confirm that we want to explore Blink's section and it will purchase a teleport ticket at the same time. This will open the teleport menu during the loading screen. We need to keep this map on screen until the loading screen is finished. We can now select a teleport pad within Realm 1 to teleport to. We choose the shop pad at the very start of Realm 1. We can then close the shop menu, but seemingly nothing happens. Since only Spyro is supposed to be able to teleport like this, the game won't warp Blink to the shop pad that we selected. However, when we chose that shop pad to teleport to, the game updated that shop pad's location as our latest checkpoint. So now all we have to do is death abuse from the nearby vines and then select yes from the mission failed screen and Blink will respawn at the shop pad that we selected. We should not be able to play as Blink here. We will call this glitch character smuggling. The biggest benefit with this glitch is that Blink has a double jump and a ground pound attack, which can be used to break dark gems. We could use Blink to break all the dark gems that Spyro cannot break, but we don't want to do that yet. There's another playable character in this game that's even more mobile than Blink, and that is Hunter. First things first, if we try to use the main teleporter as Blink, we can select another realm, but if we try to teleport there, the map menu closes and nothing seems to happen. However, once again, this updates our checkpoint to the realm that we selected. So we choose to teleport to realm 3 and then death abuse from any nearby enemy. We will then respawn in realm 3 as Blink. Realm 3 has an area in the southern part of the map where we can play as Hunter. This is the reason we wanted to unlock realm 3 as early as we did. We need to make our way to Hunter as Blink. The reason we need Blink to travel to Hunter is that the path to Hunter has a fair amount of platforming and there's a button we need to ground pound too. Spyro would not have been able to make it there without double jumping. Since Blink can't glide, it's still a bit of a challenge, but his double jump just about sees us through. We could also use Blink to ground pound any dark gems we find on the way, but we could also leave the dark gems for Hunter later as he can break them too. It's also possible for Blink to meet himself and shoot himself. This jump is the most challenging for sure. Also, make sure to stand close to the shot pads here to activate it as a fast travel point for Spyro later. Even though Spyro is the only character that can use shot pads and fast travel with them, other characters can still activate them. Blink can also use wall jumps on these specific walls to reach some high up platforms. From here we can hit a button to activate a cannon for Spyro later. This is also because Spyro is the only character that can use cannons. When we approach the most southern area to find Hunter, a cutscene plays as normal, which shows Spyro being defeated by a mammoth. Sparks manages to escape escape, but at what cost? We then get put in control of Hunter automatically. This is what would have happened if Spyro entered this area for the first time anyway. Hunter will now play through the gloomy glacier level so that he can rescue Spyro. Since this level is meant to be played by Hunter anyway, we can play this whole level casually. Just make sure to grab all the collectibles on the way. One of the more hidden collectibles is the dragon egg under this giant rib cage. There's also a Sparks minigame that we can play on the way to earn another dragon egg and light gem. Sparks' minigames play kind of like a rail shooter, and they can also be played casually. It's only Spyro's wings we're banning after all. There's also an easy to miss target that we need to shoot with our bow and arrow. This opens a door to another light gem. By the end of Gloom
gloomy glacier, Hunter will free Spyro from his cage in a cutscene. This will also put us in control of Spyro in a new level called the Icy Citadel. Although we can't explore much of the Icy Citadel just yet though, we're able to ignite a furnace for a light gem. And we can just make it on top of these moving platforms with regular single jumps. Up here we can open a door by turning a water wheel, but then when we run inside, we find a dead end. We can't horn dive this button on the ground without double jumping first. Also, the water wheel door closes behind us, so now we're just trapped in here. So in other words, don't go through that door as Spyro. Thankfully, there is a shop pad in the icy citadel that we can use to fast travel back to the shop pad that we had blink activate for us. Also, at this point in the run, we had enough gems to purchase a keychain, which allows us to carry three keys at once. So we top up our keys too. This shop pad that blink activated for us is an area now where we can swap to Hunter as Spyro. There's also a light gem waiting for us here. After all that, we have finally set ourselves up to be able to smuggle Hunter out of his section. We can see Hunter waiting here at the entrance of Gloomy Glacier. We can swap over to him anytime we want. If we swap over to him, we are forced into Gloomy Glacier, and if we try to leave Gloomy Glacier as Hunter, it forces us back in control of Spyro again. Basically, we need to get Hunter out of here. If we take Hunter to the first climbable wall in Gloomy Glacier, we can use a ledge clip to get out of bounds. From here, we need to make our way back to the very start of Gloomy Glacier, but we must stay on the very edge of the terrain all the way there. If we go too close inwards, we'll get clipped back in bounds. Too far away from the edge and we'll fall into the void. We'll call this seam walking. When we see Spyro, we need to make sure we don't get too close as we don't want the cutscene to activate that swaps us back to Spyro. Instead, if we look to the right, we can see a couple of trees. We want to double jump to make it on the other side of these trees. We are now playing in the main hub area of Realm 3 as Hunter, and this was definitely not intended. We have now gone over both methods of character smuggling, one for Blink and one for Hunter. From now on, if we mention that we need to take a certain character into a certain level later on, these are the usual methods that we will repeat to smuggle that character where they shouldn't be. It's time to travel back to Realm 1 as Hunter, and then do what Spyro could not do. Just like with Blink, Hunter cannot use the shop pads, so we need to travel manually back to the main teleporter. We use it to teleport to Realm 1. But just like with Blink, Hunter can't use the main teleporter unless we death abuse after selecting a destination, which we do by letting these giant snowballs flatten us. After all that, we finally have control of Hunter in Realm 1. We can use Hunter to break all the dark gems that we left behind earlier. We break the first dark gem to repair the bridge, and then we enter the cave that we got soft locked in at the start of the challenge and break the second dark gem inside. And finally, we break the last dark gem near Sergeant Bird, which also reveals a dragon egg that is 100% completion in the dragon village. We cross the bridge over to Crocovile Swamp and open the chest on the way for a light gem. Fortunately, the keys that we have in our inventory get carried over to whichever character we smuggle. We swam through here as Spyro before, but Hunter's platforming skills are more than enough to reach anywhere in this level. We can break all three dark gems that we couldn't break before, and we can open all the treasure chests that we missed too. Having three keys at once is very helpful here, otherwise we'd have to perform the character smuggle all over again for each treasure chest. Fun fact, Hunter's ground pound can ignite the fireworks for some reason. Just an example of how odd the game behaves when characters interact with objects they're not normally meant to. There'll be more examples of this later. Hunter can also activate this hidden door with his melee attack to find a hidden light gem. We now want to navigate to the end of the level and find the frog NPC. Now we can complete his turret minigame twice for another dragon egg and light gem. That is Crocovile Swamp 100% complete. The only way to get Hunter out of the swamp now is to platform over these lily pads, and this is why we couldn't do this minigame as Spyro, as talking to the frog NPC would have removed our swim in air, and without Spyro's wings, he wasn't going to get over these lily pads. We need to make our way back to Dragon Village on foot though, since only Spyro can fast travel between shop pads. The only level remaining in Realm 1 is Dragonfly Falls, but to enter that level we need to use the ball gadget, and only Spyro can use the ball gadget. There is only one method of swapping back to Spyro after character smuggling. We need to go back to where we left him at Realm 3. We use the main teleporter to return there. As usual, we must death abuse to make the teleporter work, and we return to the very spot that we swapped to Hunter in the first place. In the cutscene, we simply choose yes when Spyro asks if we're ready for him to get going. And now, we will be back in control of Spyro. We can use the shop pads again now, so we can stock up on keys and teleport back to 
Realm 1. We now have enough collectibles to activate the Ball Gadget, so we use that to travel to Dragonfly Falls. The Ball Gadget section itself only has gems to collect, so nothing that will count towards our completion percentage. Once we arrive in Dragonfly Falls, we find a ledge very early on that Spyro cannot reach with a single jump. However, as luck would have it, there is a fairy on top of this ledge, and we're just in range for her to zap us. This updates our checkpoint to the fairy's position rather than our position, so if we use the spike trap nearby to death abuse, we will respawn on top of the ledge that we were trying to reach. As we advance, we find ourselves on a bridge. There's a cannon on a high platform that we can't reach normally, but we have a way. We can use the wall grind technique off the top of the bridge post and off the sides of some walls here. With that, we can just reach the cannon and destroy the metal vault door on the other side of the bridge to reveal a light gem. Although, Sparrow can't get over to that light gem without his wings. That's okay, we'll come back here later. For now, we'll move on. The next area looks daunting in a wingless challenge. These gaps are very far apart, so even charge jumps won't get us over. If we want to get from one ledge to the other, we need to use wall grinding yet again. This will be an even tougher test for our wall grinding skills. Using this technique, we can make our way along the left wall to reach the next ledge. Edge. There is a dark gem here, and breaking it would reveal a cannon, but of course, we can't break dark gems as Spyro. It's a shame too, because that cannon would have been used to break some boulders blocking our way. Instead, we're forced to perform an even longer string of wall grinds to go straight to the other end of the area. It might not come across in the video, but this whole wall grind section was very difficult, and it legitimately took me over two hours of attempts, but we finally made it over. There's a dragon egg over a wide gap, but we skip that and go to the next area which has water in it. It's shallow water at first, but if we carry on to the following area we find a large body of water. It also happens to be full of killer fish. Thankfully we can outswim the fish. The game should have known better than to give us access to water though, because we're going to perform another swim in air glitch. First we swim into the top left corner of the area between the rock wall and the netting. If the fish get in our way we can kill them with a charge. We want to charge up to the water's surface at a slight angle. And and as we're about to hit the surface, we keep the charge button held, but we let go of the left analog stick to leave it neutral. Spyro will charge back down into the water in midair, and it's possible that this can clip us through the wall. From here, we swim out of bounds, beyond where the water's surface would normally reach, and now we can swim up and over the surface. Now that we have achieved swim in air in Dragonfly Falls, we want to swim around and collect as many collectibles out in the open as possible. Don't swim too close to Hunter though, as this will activate a cutscene which removes our swim in air. There are many light gems and dragon eggs we can reach now. Even if they're seemingly closed off, we can swim through the walls from out of bounds. We can even swim up and over this secret locked door that would normally require 70 light gems to open. There's an egg thief here, but thankfully we can still catch him while swimming. In fact, we can even swim into Hunter's section of the level from out of bounds and get all the collectibles that we can reach there too. Hunter would have been able to reach them, but this just saves time. Once we have everything, we can finally speak to Hunter to swap control over to him. Once again, we plan on freeing Hunter from his small section of the level with a ledge clip. We need to grab the far left edge of the platform above us. We can get more height from Hunter's double jump by hitting the second jump right as we start to fall down from the first jump. That allows us to grab the edge and ledge clip through the rock. As soon as we clip through, we need to jump away to avoid being pushed back in bounds. As sheer luck would have it, there is a solid platform out of bounds right here. And if we know where to aim, we can land on it. Now we can see the rest of the tunnel that leads back to Spyro. Just like we did in Realm 3, we need to platform along the seam of the tunnel very carefully and remain out of bounds. It's arguably more difficult this time as it's hard to tell where the seam of the tunnel is. Eventually we get close enough that we can see the small waterfall behind Spyro. This is just close enough to reach with an optimal double jump into a kick. Once again, we're not supposed to be in the main area of Dragonfly Falls as Hunter. It's a good thing we can though, because we need him to do what Spyro cannot do once again. The same double jump trick can be used from earlier to help us get around, and this gets us back to the beginning of the level. We can now hit buttons, grab any dragon eggs and light gems that we missed, and break the dark gems too. This means we can now access a cannon where we had to wall grind before, but since only Spyro can use cannons, we'll need to get him back here. This means getting over the large gap again, and of course, Hunter can't wall grind. There is a method of getting over there though. If Hunter takes damage in mid-air, he can quickly jump again before he falls. We use the birds flying overhead to take a 
damage mid-jump, and then jump again to the other side. That was tougher than it looked. We can also find another Sparks minigame for another Dragon Egg and Light Gem. On the way back to Spyro, we open any treasure chests that we missed as well. This means that we have 100% completion in the Dragonfly Falls, which also means we have 100% completion in all of Realm 1. So, we swap back to Spyro and use the nearest shop pad to teleport out of there. We stock up on keys once again and use the main teleporter to go to Realm 2. The main hub level for Realm 2 is called the Coastal Remains, and now we can actually start going through the levels here instead of just glitching straight into the boss. We talk to Otto the Otter, who wants his pool refilled with water. We can travel to the other end of the shallow water to find the first water wheel that we need to turn. We're supposed to double jump over to the poles, sticking out the sides of the wheel, but with only a single jump, the closest pole is just out of reach. We can use a single wall grind against the water wheel itself to just reach the pole. With that, we can turn the water wheel and now the pool has gotten even deeper. That water is now deep enough to submerge in. We can use the same trick to clip through the corner that we used in Dragonfly Falls. Once again, this allows us to swim out of bounds and in the air. Of course, we can use this to reach as many collectibles as we possibly can. This gets us several more dragon eggs and light gems. We even have enough light gems to open the secret gate that leads to an egg thief and a light gem. We can also swim over the wide gap to the second water wheel. Normally, we would need to break a dark gem to reach this wheel. We're supposed to stand on the platforms on the wheel to turn it, but we can actually just swim downwards into the platforms. It's a fair bit more awkward doing it like this, but it's still very possible. Speaking with Otto again will reward us with a light gem. We can also take the time to complete Blink's minigame while we're here, as much as I didn't want to. Blink's levels are easily the worst part of this game and I hate him. With that finally out of the way, we can also complete the Turtle's Mother minigame as well. We want to enter the next level now, but first First, we need to get swimming air again. Once we get it, we swim over to the very right side of the map. There's an elevator here that takes us to a level called Cloudy Domain. However, if we swim over the top of the elevator, it still works. Since there's no separate loading screen between Coastal Remains and Cloudy Domain, we maintain swimming air during the elevator ride. The only difference is that for some reason, Spyro gains height automatically during the elevator ride. He goes so far off screen that when the elevator finally reaches the top, Spyro is swimming very high in the sky. The level is deloaded as a result, so we'll need to swim all the way back down. You can see just by looking at it that this level would normally be very platform heavy, so being able to carry over swim in air glitch is a lifesaver. As usual, we swim all over the entire level looking for collectibles. There's also a light gem trapped inside this structure with a glass roof, but it is possible to swim inside from underneath and grab the light gem without having to release it. Also, as we swim around, we make sure to activate every shop pad in the level by getting close to them. This level also leads onto another ball gadget section, but we don't want to go in there yet, and you'll see why soon. Once once we have all the collectibles out in the open, we can swim over to Sergeant Bird to complete his minigame. I actually quite like these variations of the speedways, but I found this one so difficult, especially the second part of the light gem. I was glad to have this one out of the way when I finally won. Of course, talking to Sergeant Bird cancelled our swim in air, so when we're done with his minigame, we're stuck on foot. Fortunately, there is a shot pad on the ledge right below us. We'll use that to teleport out of Cloudy Domain. There's no other way Spyro can get out of here without his wings. We're not done with Cloudy Domain yet though. We still need to break all the dark gems and open all the treasure chests there. We make sure to stock up on keys again if we need to. We return to Realm 3 to perform the character smuggle with Hunter yet again. You guessed it, we're taking Hunter into Realm 2. This means we can break all the dark gems in Coastal Remains. If you're wondering how Hunter interacts with deep water since he was never programmed to be able to swim, he just walks over the surface like this, like he's the second coming. This is handy though since we can reach a dragon egg by walking over a pool of water. This also helps us to reach a couple of dark gems here too. There's one high up that's quite tough to reach, but we can ledge clip underneath and then quickly double jump from the seam to just reach the top. There's also a dark gem that raises a cannon out of the water, and another that raises the entrance to a new level from under the water. But to access this level, we must break this glass dome. Normally, Sparrow would horn dive his way through here, but since we can't do that without a double jump, we'll have to use a ground pad 
pound instead. Except for some reason, Hunter's ground pound doesn't break the glass. It activates buttons and it breaks dark gems, but it won't break this glass. We'll have to come back here later. Regardless though, we have still managed to complete Coastal Remains 100%. Now, we still need to finish Cloudy Domain. We head back to the elevator as Hunter. We should have all three keys, so we can start opening treasure chests here too. We mentioned it before, but only Sparrow can use the shot pads, so there's no fast travelling for Hunter. Fortunately, Hunter's double jump is so good that we can pretty much clear any gap that Sparrow would have needed to glide over. To get the most out of Hunter's double jump, as we mentioned, press jump again as we start to fall down from the first jump. This will ensure maximum hang time. Hunter helps open up more of the level by breaking the dark gems and hitting the buttons, including a door that leads to an elder dragon who wants to teach us how to deflect projectiles with our wings. Of course, we will be ignoring this completely. It's also important for later that we hit this button to raise some floating platforms, and that we break the following dark gem to raise even more floating platforms. We'll need these for when we revisit as Spyro later. As for these balloon enemies, we need to deflect their boomerangs back at them, and Hunter has a deflection ability of his own. He spins his bow, which helps us reach the third and final dark gem of the level. With that, we need to return to the coastal remains. As usual, if we're not playing as Spyro, we must travel manually. We want to swap back to Spyro, and the only way to do that is to go all the way back to Realm 3, which requires another death abuse for the main teleporter to work. Approaching Spyro will allow us to swap to him, and we can fast travel to Realm 2 again. As usual, stock up on keys if needed. Once again, we get the swim in air and swim to the elevator to Cloudy Domain. Once we're up there, we swim to the rightmost island and enter the ball gadget section. This also removes the swim in air glitch. We play the ball gadget track casually to reach the light gem at the end, but it is very important that we do not fall down the hole at the end of the track. Normally, going down this hole would end the ball gadget section and return us to Cloudy Domain. However, it returns us to an isolated platform where we have no choice but to glide from if we want to reach any of the shot pads in the level. We also can't go back. Basically, going into that hole is a soft lock. Instead, once we've grabbed the light gem on the track, we must death abuse by going over the edge. We then select no, and this puts us back at the entrance of the ball gadget section instead with the light gem still collected. Since Hunt has already activated all the buttons and broken all the dark gems in this level, these platforms are now here to help Spyro get to this platform. We need to reach the nearest shot pad to teleport out of here, and that means we have to do a bit of platforming first, which is not one of Spyro's strong points in this run. We can see a floating platform down below that we need to reach, but it's quite far away. If we want to make it over there, we need to stand here, jump, charge into the very tip of this spike, and keep both jump, charge, and forward all held to achieve the maximum charge jump distance. Shortly after we reach the apex of the jump, we let go of charge, and then quickly hold it again to charge downwards at about 45 degrees. This isn't quite enough to reach the platform, but if we keep the jump button held, let go of charge, and leave the left analog stick neutral before we hit the platform, it's possible to perform a single wall grind off the side of the platform. Since the platform doesn't have collision underneath, we're able to jump up through the platform off the wall grind. I'll have you know that was a lot harder than it looked. This leads us to a supercharged pad that we can use to break this metal door, which hides a dragon egg in a chest. This is the final collectible in Cloudy Domain. We have finally completed this level 100%. There's even a shop pad nearby, so we can escape from here no problem. The final level of Realm 2 is Sunken Ruins. The level's entrance is under the glass dome that we saw earlier, the one that Spyro is supposed to horn dive to break open, the same dome that Hunter's ground pound cannot break. This leaves us with only one choice. We need to try Blink's ground pound. I know, I keep saying it, but we have to stock up on keys again while we can. It will prevent us having to revisit levels more than we need to, should we ever run out of keys. Just like we did the first time, we used the menu storage glitch to smuggle Blink into Realm 2. To make it a bit easier, we can use the Blink already in Realm 2 instead of travelling all the way to Crocovile Swamp again. Just make sure to teleport Blink to the Waterfall Walkway shop pad, which is very close to where Blink stands anyway. We head through the tunnel that leads to the glass dome, but there is an unexpected opportunity 
obstacle in our way. We mentioned that Hunter could walk over the surface of water, since he was never programmed to be able to swim, but Blink does not have the same luxury. If Blink touches any body of water at all, he drowns immediately. It doesn't matter how shallow the water is, he sinks like he's in quicksand. This even goes for the tiny puddles in the tunnel too. We need to platform over these puddles of water and avoid the swinging traps at the same time. We want to stick to the very left of the tunnel until we reach the second swinging trap. We now need to get to the right side of the tunnel. This is the only time we ever made use of Blink's crouch button to avoid being hit by this swinging trap. When the time is right, we double jump over towards the enemies on the right side. Just be careful not to get crowded by them or we might get proxied into the puddle. There's a second set of swinging traps that we need to get by now. We start double jumping along the left side and land between the last two traps. Now we need to double jump to the short grass on the other side of the last swinging trap. This should avoid all the puddles. Now we need to platform our way to the glass dome without falling in the water. There's a handy trick we can use with Blink's double jump. If you do a short hop and then perform a double jump just before Blink lands, his double jump height will always be at its absolute maximum. This is very helpful as we need to clear some big gaps here, but when we finally reach the dome, we ground pound it and break right through. We're not sure why Hunter couldn't do that, but oh well. Now for the hard part. We need to get Blink back to the main teleporter, as there's no other way of swapping to a different character. Backtracking through the swinging traps is awkward enough, but we've already done it once. It's actually possible to clip out of bounds here by punching the wall in this spot. This makes backtracking a bit less dangerous. The real challenge comes from getting across the long pool of water that we filled up earlier. We're never going to be able to platform over it. So instead, how about we go under it? If we use a ledge clip, we can clip through the wall under the water surface. It's actually the surface of the water that causes Blink to drown on contact, not the body of water itself. Since we never touched the surface, Blink can walk around down here just fine. We stay to the right side to remain out of bounds, and we seam walk our way towards the other end of the pool. We can see Otto the Otter up on the ledge that we want to reach, but jumping up causes Blink to drown since we're touching the water surface. We need to double jump very precisely underneath the rock wall so that we get proxied towards that ledge. Doing this will still cause us to drown. However, if we get proxied close enough to Otto and then quickly talk to him before Blink's drowning animation can finish, the cutscene of Otto talking to us will interrupt the dying animation. This means that we can reach the main teleporter and select Realm 3. We death abuse to load into Realm 3 and we've done all this before. We need to go to the entrance of Gloomy Glacier to swap control to Hunter. The last time we made our way here with Blink, since it was the first time we ever went to Gloomy Glacier, it started a cutscene that showed a mammoth stomping on Spyro. This moved the game along as it normally would have and thus it put us in control of Hunter automatically. On a repeat visit as Blink, it's a little bit different. This time we can just approach Gloomy Glacier and we can see both Hunter and Spyro just standing there. Normally, if we were in control of Spyro, it would just be Hunter waiting here and the same would be true vice versa. However, we're playing as neither of them, so they're both here. This means that when we approach them as Blink, both of their unique cutscenes occur at the same time. In fact, if we make selections from their dialogue during their cutscenes, we can get some odd effects. The Blink death stare, Blink standing in the way, double Hunter, disappearing Spyro, disappearing Hunter, and of course, two audios overlapping each other. So, Spyro, uh, you know only I with my going? superior feline abilities. Anyway, we do this to get put in control of Hunter, and then we smuggle Hunter out once again, because we need to take Hunter into the sunken ruins in Realm 2. Now that Blink has broken the glass dome, Hunter is the one that we want to take inside. We walk over the water and take the elevator down. It goes without saying, but Hunter was never supposed to be here. We need him for the first visit to this level so he can break some dark gems. Blink could have done it too, but as we said before, Hunter has better movement. Also, there are some treasure chests in this level that we want to completely avoid. We can only carry three keys at once, and we can only buy more keys as Spyro, so we don't want to waste any keys on a chest that won't count towards our completion percentage. The very first chest in this level is a good example of a chest that we need to completely ignore. Don't even get close to it as it will just waste one of our keys automatically. In a casual playthrough, we would be playing through here as Spyro. We would turn right here and dive into the water to continue the level, but of course, Hunter can't do that. Instead, Hunter is going to have to play the level backwards. If we jump up to these shell lamps on the wall, some of them are 
allow us to ledge clip through the wall. Using this, we can go around the closed door from out of bounds. We landed on the lower level, but the moving platform can get us back up again. We can ground pound the button here to open the closed door from this side. As with Cloudy Domain, we want to activate as many buttons as we can whilst we can. The chest in this room also contains a light gem, but we don't want to open this just yet. Now that we've opened the door with the button, Spara will be able to reach this chest with ease later. We want to use Hunter to open the chests that Spyro can't reach. Since we're now playing the level backwards, sometimes we'll see rubble blocking the doorways. Normally we would clear this rubble from the other side, but Hunter can actually just ledge clip right over the top. We want to use our first key to get a light gem in here, and we can hit all the buttons to reveal a dark gem. As we continue backwards through the level, we see holograms of the professor. These holograms signify invincibility pads, and they're invisible to anyone other than Spyro. Since we are playing this level backwards, we have yet to see the cutscene that introduces these invincibility pads. They basically provide Spyro with temporary invulnerability, but if we stand on them as any other character, the invulnerability will last forever. Since Hunter was never meant to be able to stand on any of these invincibility pads, the code that removes the invulnerability after a few seconds doesn't work. This might sound like a good thing, but not always. This would heavily limit the ways that we can death abuse later, so we're going to avoid these invincibility pads. They may be invisible, but the holograms of the professor can still be seen, so they're not too hard to avoid. It's possible these pads aren't active yet, but we're not taking any chances. We can platform our way upwards using the archway and the shell lamps, and we can break another dark gem. In the next room we want to open a chest with our second key for a dragon egg. The room after has a light gem guarded by fish statues spitting green projectiles at us. We use our third and final key on another chest for a dragon egg, and now we find ourselves in a room where we are underneath the trigger for the cutscene that introduces the invincible pads. We can use some fairly precise platforming to reach these pipes. Once we're at the highest pipe that we can reach, we can ledge clip through the grate on the ceiling to get to the top floor. But if we get too close to the professor, then we will trigger a cutscene and this will definitely activate the invincibility pads. We'd rather play it safe and avoid the cutscene trigger altogether. This means we can beat the nearby Sparks minigame too. Did I mention that the Sparks minigames were my second least favourite minigames? The next room leads to the other end of the swimming section that we saw at the start of the level. This looks like a dead end for Hunter though, but we can use some out of bounds nonsense to grab some more collectibles. So if we use this lamp, we can get a jump off it to reach the top of this doorway. From here, we can jump up and over the wall to grab a light gem. Normally, Spyro would need to swim through the acid after using an invincibility pad to reach this light gem. Thankfully, a window opens up and allows us to escape the room after getting it. Now we need to use the same ledge clips to reach the top of the doorway, but this time we want to reach the room beyond the light gem room. It requires a very optimal double jump into a kick, but it's possible to jump off this wall for even more distance. The issue is the next room doesn't always load in quick enough and we just fall into the void. However, if we zoom in the camera right as we make the jump, the room loads in quicker. We break the third and final dark gem here too, which reveals these whirlwinds. Hunter can't use these of course. We're actually trapped in here now, but if we death abuse from an enemy nearby, we can respawn at our latest checkpoint, which is the Sparks minigame. The dark gems remain destroyed, and now we need to travel all the way back through the level again, the way we came. We're done with Hunter now, so we need to get out of here. Ironically, this backtracking actually sees us going through the level in the intended direction. Platforming can be a bit tricky here and there. There's one point where we need to grab the side of this very small bracket on the wall, but otherwise, getting back out is easy enough. We take Hunter back to Realm 3 so we can swap back to Spyro. Make sure to stock up on those keys again. It's Spyro's turn to enter the sunken ruins, and the first thing we want to do is enter the room that Hunter opened for us, and open that treasure chest that we left last time for the light gem. We're just able to get back to the door with a ledge clip, and now we can finally enter the swimming section of the level. This gets us to the room with the whirlwinds much quicker. From here, we can reach a chest for a dragon egg, and another chest behind the mermaid NPC for a light gem. Now, normally, we would use the whirlwinds in this room to reach a very high up ledge with a treasure chest on it. We banned whirlwinds in most of our previous Spyro Glideless videos, and we're not about to start allowing them now. Instead, we can return to the pool of water and use the same trick we used in Dragonfly Falls to achieve a swim in air. Although it's a bit tricky, sometimes Spyro will just fall down to the bottom, and then he does this half swimming, half not swimming thing. Once we are swimming in the air, we can swim up to grab the dragon egg. Now, this is where we need to perform a very precise trick. We can't open
open the chest on this very high ledge while swimming. And we can't lose the swimming air whilst we're up here either. The only way to do this is with a proxy. Just like how we got Blink to get proxied towards Otto, we need to get proxied very high into the air. If we swim underneath the room with the whirlwinds and slowly swim up at a slight angle, we can get a proxy that flings Spyro upwards. We need to lose the swimming air at the same time though. Remember how we said that even very shallow water removes the swimming air glitch if we touch it? Well, in this room, there are a few streams of flowing water on the walls. So, not only do we need to get a proxy by slowly swimming up at an angle, but we need to come into contact with some of the flowing water at the same time. It really is very precise. And needless to say, we were at this for ages. Either we didn't get the proxy at all, or we didn't get the height we needed, but finally, our patience paid off and we nailed the perfect proxy to reach this last chest. From here, we can use the swimming air to explore the entire level, grabbing any collectibles we may have missed. There was a dragon egg in the room where we avoided the cutscene trigger, and also we can now use the invincibility pads as intended and grab the last light gem inside an acid pool. That is, sunken ruins, finally 100% complete. We teleport out of here with the nearest shop pad, and this means that all of Realm 2 is now 100% complete as well. So it's time to actually start working on Realm 3 properly. We've already completed Gloomy Glacier, so that just leaves Frostbite Village and Icy Citadel. Firstly, we power up the nodes in the starting area with our electric breath to open a door behind Phil the Penguin. We don't want to enter that door just yet though. We need to find a way back into Icy Citadel. We have already been there once. It's the level that Sparrow was in after Hunter freed him from his cage. We couldn't explore much at the time since we needed to use a horn dive to open the only door available to us. The issue there is that normally we would need to get through Icy Citadel to reach the Realm 3 boss, so we'll just have to find another way to the boss instead. Starting in any realm except one, we use the usual method of menu storage by pressing B and start at the same time on the main teleporter. We press start again to unpause the game, access the shop. We want to choose Realm 1 as our destination. We once again get the swim in air as before. We go to buy an item and when the shop asks our are we sure? We talk to Bird to start his minigame. We need to make sure to select the teleport ticket from the shop. We hit the A button three times rapidly, and then we choose to teleport at the start of round one. As usual, nothing seems to happen, but if we death abuse by flying straight into the water, we can respawn in round one as Sergeant Bird. The main teleporter can be used to get to round three. We just need to save and reload the game to spawn there. Now we can just fly straight over the wall to bypass the vines blocking our way and fly right into the boss arena. This triggers the boss fight against Red, and now we're forced to fight this boss as Sergeant Bird. However, Sergeant Bird can't take damage in this game. You're not really meant to be able to die in speedways after all. It's an awkward fight, but we can fly into the exploding crates to knock them towards Red to deal damage. Our rockets don't seem to affect Red, but they can be used to take out his minions. The final phase is a slog, but we can't really lose, so it just takes a bit of patience. With that, Red is defeated. Now, Sergeant Bird can just fly out of the cave and back to Frostbite Village. We want to swap back to Spyro again, so we can fly over to the gloomy glacier entrance to swap back to him. The game didn't like us doing this with Blink, and it doesn't like it any better with Sergeant Bird. At one point, we gained control of Spyro before we could make a selection on the text box. If we walked away far enough, this would happen. Spyro falls into the void, and the camera seems to zip to some sort of default location. Anyway, it's still perfectly possible to swap to Spyro doing this. Now that the Realm 3 boss is down, we can actually start work on Icy Citadel itself. We needed to defeat the boss first in order to pull off what we're about to do. Using some very awkward wall grinds, we can get just enough height against the wall near the vines to clip through the wall. We then travel towards Red's arena, although we did have to do one more wall grind to reach this high step. Once we're there, we find that the door to the arena is closed. However, if we charge into the wall on the right, next to this big metal thing, we can just clip right through the wall. With that, we're on the other side of Red's arena. You can tell that we're not supposed to be here now. Now that we are here, we can use the supercharge pads to break down all the metal doors, which leads to a light gem. Now that we've broken all those metal doors, we need to smuggle Hunter so that he can hit a button to open this door. Inside, we find an egg thief, but rather than chase him with Hunter, we can just shoot him with our bow. We also need to activate the shot pad in here. Nearby, we can see a closed drawbridge that leads to Icy Citadel. The only way to lower the bridge is to break the dark gem on the other side. But this is also our ticket into 
icy citadel. We can use wall grinds to get up and around the drawbridge, the only Sparrow can wall grind. Next, we smuggle Hunter into Frostbite Village to break all the dark gems and activate any buttons we've not already hit. This opens all the doors and activates both cannons as well. There's a dragon egg underground, but don't bother wasting a key on the chest behind it. We also beat Peggy Penguin's minigame and blink section of the level for the two dragon eggs and two light gems between them. There's basically nowhere in Frostbite Village that Hunter can't reach. So once he's done everything he can do, we swap back to Spyro. Now, we want to use both of the cannons that we activated to open up some more paths. The first cannon is simple enough to reach as Spyro with a charge jump, but we can't reach the second cannon just yet until we learn how to wall kick. The door that we opened with Hunter has re-locked itself, but since we activated a shot pad beyond the door, we can teleport Spyro to it and right next to the drawbridge. Now we can perform the wall grinds to get around the drawbridge and even over to the other side, where the dark gem is waiting for us. There's an icy slope right after this which leads us to another Sergeant Bird minigame. Once that's done, we now want to do as much as we can in this level as Spyro. Of course, it should go without saying to stock up on keys. The main thing we need Spyro for is the supercharge to break the metal doors, and we can learn the wall kick ability from a dragon elder that's trapped in this big hole. There's not much more we can do as Spyro though. What we want to do is bring Hunter into this level, but the only way to do that is to lower the drawbridge. But the only way we can do that is to break the dark gem above the icy slope. There is a character that we can teleport directly into the icy citadel though, Blink the Mole. We can only teleport Blink to a shop pad within the same realm that we smuggle him from. So we need to use Blink from Frostbite Village, store the shop menu as before, and make our way to where Blink is standing. This is very awkward as it requires us to use wall grinds whilst the shop menu is on screen. It just makes this more difficult than usual, but we got there eventually. Now, when smuggling Blink, just make sure to select the shop pad within Icy Citadel to teleport Blink there after a death abuse. We can then use Blink to open a door or two that Spyro couldn't open, but the main reason we need Blink here is to break that dark gem that lowers the drawbridge, but that means getting up the icy slope first. It was intended that only Spyro can get up this slope with a supercharge. There is a way to get Blink up there though. We have to use figure of eight motions with the left analog stick and jump as soon as Blink starts to slip downwards. This allows us to slowly make our way to the top of the slope. It's not easy, but it can be done. We break the dark gem and lower the drawbridge. This gives us much easier access to the icy citadel, which will be important soon. For now, we swap back to Spyro, stock up on keys again, and re-enter icy citadel. Now that Blink has opened a few doors, we can light more furnaces that we see along the way for a reward each. There's a pole swinging section that we can do to reach a dragon egg too. Although we had to use a single wall grind to make the last jump since it was just too far away. There's a platform powered by our electric breath that carries us to a dark gem and breaking this dark gem would create a bridge. But of course Spyro can't break dark gems and no other character can activate the moving platform. This means there is a whole section of this level we can't reach yet. Now we need to get Hunter in here. We smuggle Hunter out of Gloomy Glacier once more and use the now lowered drawbridge to enter the icy citadel. Hunter helps us to break some more dark gems which reveals a cannon for Spyro to use later. Hunter can also run up the pipe to reach yet another dark gem and this opens up another pipe that leads to a dragon egg. There is a door behind an NPC that we would like to get by. If we could this would bypass the need to create that bridge we mentioned earlier. We can get a ledge clip here and now it's a process of seam walking all the way to the other side of that door. It's easier said than done though. There's a whole tunnel we need to seam walk along to reach the area with the door. This was the most difficult seam walk we've done so far but we finally made it to the tunnel behind the door. There's a whole bunch of enemies so we quickly got away before they could kill us. Now we see a big gap that we would normally have bridged but Hunter's double jump is able to clear this gap. Except I accidentally kicked myself off the edge immediately afterwards for some reason before I broke the dark gem. We were able to get back there soon enough though. We want Spyro to use the cannon here now and the only way to get Hunter out of here is to use that figure of eight method again on the icy slope. It seems a little bit easy with Hunter at least. We swap back to Spyro, have him use the cannons to break every single door and metal chest in the room. Here's a tip, if you want to get rich quick, buy a two times gem multiplier before breaking these metal chests for a big payout. We've opened up some more paths and revealed a light gem, but it's too far for Spyro to reach. You know what that means, we swapped a hunter yet again, have him reach the light gem and access the new paths. One of the new paths leads to a furnace, and we found out that hunter's arrows 
can light these, apparently. The other path leads to an elevator for a dragon egg. Back at the furnace, there's another elevator that leads up to the area where Spyro was locked up in the cage. With no limitations to our movement this time, we're able to grab the light gem floating above us. However, the water wheel has closed on us and only Spyro can open it. Even when we were Spyro, we got roadblocked right after this door by a button door. We just need to get Hunter by this first door. We can use a ledge clip here, with some more seam walking to reach the other side. This time, it was the ledge clip itself that was the hard part. Now we can finally hit this button to open this door, and light the last furnace. Also, there's a hidden chest behind a breakable wall, and Hunter can just punch the wall down. Once we defeat all the enemies in the room, we can break a dark gem to fall into the room where the Dragon Elder was from earlier. Thankfully, Hunter can now climb the sides of the wall kick walls, so we're not trapped. Now we make our way back to the NPC, who will reward us with a light gem. Now that we have turned on all the furnaces, we have finally completed Icy Citadel 100%. We just have to use that figure of eight motion to get back out again. Now that Spyro can wall kick, he can reach this high platform above one of the cannons that we activated in Frostbite Village. Reaching that cannon from here is still very difficult though. We can see that the game intended us to glide to the cannon. If we're going to reach it in this run, we'll have to use the same method that we used in Cloudy Domain. We charge jump on the very edge, keep both charge and jump held down until the right moment, then let go of charge and quickly press it again to dive towards the cannon. Since we still fall just short, we can let the left analog stick go neutral and hold the jump button to get a single wall grind. That was just enough to reach the cannon, although it took me a lot of attempts before we finally nailed it. After opening up those paths, we stock up on keys, and now we want to smuggle Hunter in again to explore those new paths. We can just reach this upper platform above one of the cannons with an optimal double jump, and this also avoids needing to use the special light gem door nearby. Once again, there's nowhere here Hunter cannot reach with his superior movement. He can even avoid having to use the falling icicle platforms by just walking over the water. With that, we've destroyed all five dark gems in Frostbite Village. And after using a couple of keys, this now means that we have 100% completed all of Realm 3. On to Realm 4, and the good news is all of Realm 4's levels are linear, in that you go directly from one to the next in order. The bad news is, is that getting through them is still as complicated as ever. As soon as we arrive, we're in Stormy Beach, and the main teleporter is surrounded by water. Using the same trick we used in Dragonfly Falls, Coastal Remains, and Sunken Ruins, we can clip through the ledge we started on and swim underneath the level to get out of bounds. Straight away, we're swimming in the air, and the idea is to swim as far through Realm 4 as possible while collecting as many light gems and dragon eggs out in the open as possible. Of course, we'll have to save the dark gems for later. There is an NPC here who has a shooting mini game for us. Once we have the rewards for completing it, we can just go back to the water to perform the swim in air glitch right afterwards. That's both dragon eggs and both light gems on Stormy Beach. Now we will swim to Molten Mount. There's a dark gem that would normally open this giant statue's mouth when destroyed, but we can just swim right through it. We soon see another NPC with a quest for us, but we don't want to lose our swim in air, so we must not talk to them. However, we can actually complete her quest before talking to her. She wants us to push these stone golems off the edge and into the lava. Even though we're swimming, we can still do this. It just takes a bit longer. Even after we drop the last golem, we still don't want to talk to the NPC for the reward. For now, we'd rather keep our swim in air. We'll claim our reward later. Also, we make sure to activate every single shot pad we see as we pass by. We're also able to swim over all the enemies' heads so we can ignore those. There is a whole platforming section that we'd need to do to reach a light gem, but we can just swim to it. There's falling lava in our way at one point, and we'd normally have to break a dark gem nearby to remove it, but we can just swim over the top. Basically, it's the same deal as usual. With swim in air, the only collectibles Spyro can't get are those inside treasure chests. We can come back for those treasure chests later. Something else to be careful of is dying. We will respawn at the most recent shock pad without the swim in air, and there's no water around here to get the swim in air again without going back to the beginning of Realm 4. Soon we find a small elevator, and even though we're swimming, we can still use it. It leads down to the next part of Realm 4, Magma Falls. We can swim to the light gem near the start of this area, but now we need to enter a ball gadget section. We ride along the minecart normally, making sure to grab all the items along the way. There are forks in the path sometimes, but we can pick a path, get the collectible, death abuse right afterwards, and then pick the other path after respawning. Once we're on the other side, we're in the second half of Magma Fall. Now, we have made it as far as Spyro can possibly get on his own. Without the swim in air, we won't reach the next shot pad. We teleport out of here with the nearest shot pad. It's time to 
Smuggle Hunter in now, and that means using the main teleporter to return to Realm 3. Although, would you believe, the main teleporter is now out of our reach without a double jump. This means that we need to get swimming air again just to get on top of the ledge so we can use the main teleporter. Make sure to stock up on keys. We don't want to have to Smuggle Hunter in any more times than we have to. Before we glitch Hunter out of Gloomy Glacier, there's something we need to do here first. We want to stock up on fire arrows. They can be found at certain points in Gloomy Glacier, and they even respawn on these points if we die. This means we can grab them, death abuse, respawn, and grab them again. The maximum we can hold is 20, so we make sure to death abuse enough times to get all 20. Once we arrive in Realm 4 with Hunter, we need to travel all the way through Realm 4 on foot, because once again, Hunter can't use shot paths. Fortunately, with Hunter's platforming skills, this is doable. We just need to make sure to break every dark gem that we missed on the way and open any important treasure chests that we missed too. Also, Hunter can walk on lava, so that makes this even easier. We can now talk to that NPC that we helped earlier and we can receive a dragon egg as a reward. We're able to open the path to Sergeant Bird's final minigame, but the path is littered with these fire demon things. We realise that Hunter can't kill these things with regular arrows, but for some reason, he can kill them with fire arrows. This is exactly why we made sure to fill up on fire arrows before coming here, as this is the only way Hunter can kill these. Once they're gone, we can beat Sergeant Bird's final minigame for two more collectibles. The following tunnel is awkward to get through though with the enemies in tight spaces. It does help that we can use the bow spin to protect ourselves from the fire demon's projectiles. This leads up to a very high ledge, and even Hunter's double jump can't quite reach it normally. To get up there, we need to push into the rock wall on the right side as we hit an optimal double jump, and this lets Hunter just grab the edge. A few more fire arrows to take out the demons and we can break the dark gem causing the lava fall. We open all the chests nearby, which uses up our last key, we break the final dark gem of the area and we make it to the elevator that we used earlier as Spyro. Now we've travelled through Stormy Beach and Molten Mount as both Spyro and Hunter and thus we have beaten them both 100%. At the start of Magma Falls, before the ball gadget section, there are two treasure chests that we couldn't open as Spyro, but we're out of keys. We are able to reach the ball gadget machine, but only Spyro was meant to be able to use it. If we want this run to continue, we need to get Hunter in that ball gadget section. If we run into the right side of the opening, we're able to wedge ourselves until we clip right through the wall. This tends to just drop us out of bounds and to our death. However, if we can quickly jump right when we clip through, with a precise landing, we can land on the seam behind the teleporter. All we need to do now is hit the load trigger underneath the machine. The best way to do that is with a well-aimed jump right at the back. Although Hunter will fall to his death as soon as he loads into the ball gadget section. We can get around this by quickly jumping as soon as the area loads in though. We can now run along the tracks instead of riding them. It was never intended to be able to travel through here on foot, and a few things don't behave like we might expect them to. A lot of the gaps in the tracks are actually still solid, and they can be stood on. But when we get to this part of the track right at the very end, we fall right through and into the void. It turns out the last stretch of track doesn't have any collision when we're on foot, and neither does the lava beneath it. But we can get around this by jumping from an earlier part of the track and landing on the lava near the tunnel at the end. We end up having to walk under the tunnel after that, but if we can get to the end of the track, we hit the trigger that puts us on the other side of the ball gadget section. Now we can start making more progress through Magma Falls. We continue to grab all the collectibles on the way, but we're still out of keys, so the treasure chests will have to wait for now. We can also beat the final Sparks minigame right here too. There's also a part of the level that's blocked by wooden planks. Sparrow needs to charge into these to break them, and normally Hunter would be able to punch them down, but for some reason this one he can't. We make sure to activate the shot pad here and move on to the dark mine. There are several slow moving platforms that we must use to cross this lava. Normally with Hunter we would just run over the lava, but if we do that here we'll miss the load trigger for the dark mine. So we use the moving platforms until we're close enough. We can open the nearby light gem door as it only requires 45 light gems, but getting by the enemy on the other side is a different story. We took the other path instead, but this way leads to a pile of rocks that Hunter can't break. This means that this is as far as Hunter can reach on his own. We need to swap back to Spyro, but 
but the only way to get Hunter out of here and back to Realm 3 is to manually backtrack all the way through Realm 4. With no collectibles to distract us, we make a beeline back to the ball gadget machine. We need to clip into it again, but this time it's a bit more difficult. Getting the clip itself seemed more inconsistent than before, but we got it eventually. Hitting the load trigger here puts us straight at the other end of the ball gadget section, which is very fortunate. The fire demon things have all respawned though, which is annoying. We had to try and jump over them as best we could, sometimes accepting that we were going to take damage. We can also avoid a lot of these fire demons with a big double jump here. The rest of the backtrack is fairly simple, albeit tedious, and we make it back to the main teleporter. We teleport to Realm 3, death abuse from a nearby enemy to respawn in Realm 3, and then swap to Spyro. Now, thanks to Hunter, we can use the shock pads to teleport Spyro to any part of Realm 4 that Hunter has already been to. We stock up on keys again, and we teleport to Magma Falls near the Sparks minigame. This is where those wooden boards were in our way, and Hunter couldn't break them. Spyro can charge them down, and then use a few charge jumps to clear some gaps. From here, we can chase down the Egg Thief. That's the last Dragon Egg in Magma Falls. We will need to Death Abuse to get out of this area, though, as we can't jump back. Now we can teleport to Dark Mines and pick up where Hunter left off. Our electric breath makes short work of the enemies that roadblocked Hunter. Behind them, we see an invincibility pad next to an acid pool. We can use the invincibility pad to quickly swim through the acid and grab an egg and a light gem but getting back out again without double jumping proves to be fatal. Thankfully, we keep the collectibles, and our last checkpoint was close by anyway. Next, we take the other path through the purple gas leaks and use a key to open a chest for a light gem. Now we can charge through and break the rocks that also roadblocked Hunter earlier. The following area looks heavy on platforming, and Spyro is not going to get very far from here. Not on foot, anyway. We head back to the acid pool and use the invincibility pad. There just so happens to be a part of the wall here that isn't solid. This isn't any kind of trick or glitch, the wall legitimately just doesn't have any collision in this spot. We'll call it an oversight. This allows us to swim in the air. The problem is, the game still considers us swimming in acid, so when our invulnerability runs out, we still die. We want a way to keep swimming air for as long as we need, and there just so happens to be a way. First, we get the swimming air again in the same way. We quickly swim over to the nearest shock pad, and we hover over it until we see the button prompt to activate it. Now we wait for the invulnerability to run out. As soon as it does, Spyro will take damage, immediately followed by dying. If we activate the shock pad during the dying animation, we interrupt the animation, and Spyro doesn't die. We have now put Spyro in a zombie state, which means he can no longer take damage. We want to go back to the acid pool and get the swimming air again, but we must use the invincibility pad first, even though we have the zombie glitch activated. Otherwise, this happens, and we just get stuck down here. After getting the swimming air a second time, now that we're not in the acid pool anymore, we can let the invulnerability timer run out, and Spyro doesn't die. Now we can swim all over the dark mine, grabbing all the collectibles out in the open. As usual, we still can't open the treasure chests while swimming, but we'll be back for those. The same goes for the dark gems. There's a room with robot gunners, and defeating them all reveals a dark gem, but Spyro can't defeat them if he's swimming. Breaking that dark gem would normally have opened the way to continue the level, but we can just swim over the wall and out of bounds to reach the next area regardless. We can see Blink in this tunnel, and this is his last minigame, but we don't want to lose swimming air yet, so we won't be talking to him. If we swim inbounds and into the room with the elevator, we can send it down, and we can follow it down to reach the lower floor of the dark mine. We continue to grab all the collectibles we can swim to and make our way through. This room especially looks like it would have been impossible for Spyro to get through without his wings. We see a series of corridors blocked by big enemies and metal doors. We're supposed to defeat each of these big enemies to open the doors that they guard, but defeating them requires breath attacks. Since we can't use breath attacks while swimming, we'll just have to swim over the top of everything instead. As we approach the end of the Dark Mines, all that's left in the level are two dragon eggs, two dark gems, and a single light gem. One of the eggs is in a chest, and the other egg and light gem are earned as part of Blink's minigame. We'll be back for those soon. For now, let's move on to the final level of the game. 
Red's laboratory. The door to the level is locked, and we can't hit the button to open it. The ceiling here is solid, so we have to swim back to the end of the dark mine, just to swim out of bounds. This seems to be the only way we can get into Red's laboratory. Once we're able to enter the level, we can see from the map that there is a central circular room with four branching paths. Three of them lead to collectibles, and the fourth leads to the final boss. Naturally, we'll be swimming along the other three paths to grab all the collectibles we can first. We also need to go to the central room to catch an egg thief. Any and all closed doors that would normally be in our way can be swam over, so this isn't that difficult. We're still making sure to activate all the shop pads as we see them as well. Before long, we have all the light gems and all the dragon eggs in Red's laboratory. Spyro's work isn't done though. We've been seeing all these large, pink robots guarding the metal doors. Hunter simply cannot defeat these robots, and the doors they guard will not open unless they are defeated. If we plan on getting Hunter through this level, and we do, we're going to need to defeat all those robots as Spyro ahead of time. First things first, we need to lose the swim in air. This is because we need to use the electric breath to take down the robots. We talk to the NPC in the central room to lose swim in air, and we make our way down each of the three branching paths one at a time. We'll take the top right path first. We see an example right away of a big pink robot guarding a metal door. Even if we manage to squeeze by the robot, the door won't open until we defeat it. A door blocks us from going any further down this path, and we need to hit a button to open it. Spyro can't do that, so instead we can use a shot pad to teleport to the other side of the door. This is why it was important to activate all the shot pads in the level while we were swimming in air. Next to the shot pad here, there is a room with several yellow lasers and moving red lasers. In a casual playthrough, we would just double jump over these lasers, so we need another way of getting past them. If we get hit by the moving red laser, Spyro will get knocked back as he takes damage. We have to have our back to the yellow lasers when we get hit by the red laser. Spyro will get damage boosted through the yellow lasers. It's a good thing there's a lot of fodder in this room because we're going to need it to stay alive after all the damage boosts. Once we're on the other side of the lasers, we come to a locked door. It is guarded by a big robot, only the robot is on the other side of the door. Casually, we would have entered this room from the other side, which explains why we can't open it from this side. However, if we stand as close to the door as possible, our electric breath still hits the robot on the other side. So even if we find ourselves on the wrong side of these doors, Spyro can still get through them this way. Once we've opened all the doors, we need to damage boost our way through the laser room again so we can teleport back to the central room. Next, we take the top left path. We can defeat the enemies in the first room to activate two rising platforms, but Spyro won't be able to reach any anywhere further than that. We can teleport to the end of the top left path, but there's not much point since we can't reach any big robots from there. We'll teleport to the bottom right path instead, and here we do find some big robots that need defeating. With that, Spyro has done all he can here. It's time to get Hunter back. We teleport back to Stormy Beach, we use Swim in Air to reach the main teleporter, we go to round 3, we stock up on keys, and swap to Hunter. Just like last time, we make sure to get 20 fire arrows before smuggling Hunter out of Gloomy Glacier. After teleporting Hunter to Realm 4, we must travel all the way through the realm on foot all over again, in exactly the same way we did the first time. Just make sure to save at least three fire arrows this time. On this second trip as Hunter, we can now open the treasure chests that we had to leave on our first trip. This gives us the last collectible in Magma Falls, which means we have beaten the Magma Falls 100%. Once we reach the Dark Mine, the rocks that were in our way have been destroyed. This means Hunter will need to to do some perilous platforming, but he can handle it. We use our second key on the chest here for the dragon egg. We nearly got caught by some crumbling ground, and we arrive at the gunner robots guarding the dark gem. This is why we save those fire arrows, as they are the only thing that Hunter can use to defeat these robots. Once they're defeated, this reveals a dark gem, and breaking this dark gem reveals the intended route to the next area, which is also where Blink is waiting for us. Now is the time to beat Blink's minigame, but mercifully, this is the last one in the game. Completing this horrible minigame for the last time earns us the last dragon egg and the last light gem in the entire game. Moving on from here, Hunter finds his first big robot that's actually blocking a pathway. As mentioned before, Hunter cannot defeat these big robots at all. We previously had Spyro defeat these big robots in order to open the doors that they guard, but unfortunately the robots respawn when we re-enter the realm. Defeating them once as Spyro still unlocks the doors that they guard, so we didn't defeat them for nothing. When it comes to actually bypassing these robots as Hunter, we need to get creative. Hunter's ground pound can be used to stun the big robots if we're close enough. 
we can use this to our advantage and squeeze by with a punch on the right side. The following platforming section is one of the more difficult in the game, but once again, Hunter proves his double jumps are just as good as Spyro's glides. There is an awkwardly located button for the next area, but Hunter was practically built for this. He wasn't meant to fight these robots though. There's another big pink robot, and there's not enough room to squeeze by this one. However, if we get hit by the robot shockwave attack, we can get knocked upwards. Using the same trick we used in Dragonfly Falls, we can get another jump in midair after taking damage. We can use this extra jump to go right over the top and into the next room. After some big jumps, we reach the last dark gem in the dark mine, which also means we've completed the dark mine 100%. A bit more platforming later and we enter Red's laboratory. We need to get Hunter to the end of all three branching paths, as there is a dark gem at the end of each one. But first, we actually need to reach the central area. There's another robot guarding a door, and unfortunately, we weren't able to reach this robot as Spyro, so this door remains locked. However, we can use a ledge clip in the corner of the room to get out of bounds. We need to jump immediately as soon as we clip through the wall, or the game tries to push us back in bounds. Once again, just like in Dragonfly Falls, as sheer luck would have it, there is yet another small platform out of bounds right here. It's not easy to see, but with some trial and error, we can land on it. I'm starting to think the developers wanted us to try stuff like this. From this platform, we can see a couple more big robots guarding doors, and it seems like we could skip the second one, but not the third. However, if we jump towards these fans and land on the very edge, we stay out of bounds. Now we can see walk our way around the room and to the other side of the locked door. With that, we can reach the central area. Now, to tackle each of these three paths one at a time. Starting with the top right, we can get by the first big robot, but directly afterwards, we see a locked door. There's a button on the upper ledge that opens the door, but we can only get up there by moving a platform that is powered by Spyro's electric breath. So, we'll just have to find an unintended method of getting up there instead. We can use the first big robot to our advantage. If we get another damage boost, and with precise timing, positioning, and an optimal double jump, it's possible to grab the left edge of the ceiling. We pull ourselves up and quickly double jump to the upper platform in the next room. That was a lot harder than it looked. From here, we can hit the button and move on. The rest of this path is easy for Hunter. He can clear the lasers and reach the dark gem. It's a bit awkward to break the dark gem since it's guarded by two big robots, but it is possible. Next, we'll take the top left path. At the end, we can see the dark gem trapped in a tube. There's a button at the bottom that opens the tube, but getting back up again is the hard part. The intended way back up is to use the poles sticking out of the wall to swing from, but only Spyro can pole swing. It's just possible to land on and jump off this small pipe if we're accurate enough, but we need to do this on a time limit or the dark gem gets trapped again. After many attempts, we finally pulled this off and broke the second dark gem in Red's laboratory. There's only one dark gem left, so we backtrack to the central area and take the bottom right path. Since Sparrow already unlocked all the doors here, we find the dark gem easy enough. We have to release it with a button and platform our way over a large bottomless pit and lasers. It looks daunting, but we nailed this section first time, and destroyed the last dark gem in the whole game. This means that we have every single collectible in the entire game, which puts our overall completion percentage on 99%. All that remains is the final boss fight against Red. We make our way back to the central area and we take the fourth path to the final boss. We can take on the final boss, Mecha Red, as Hunter if we want to. And since we already have him here, why not try it? The boss kinda has three phases, and the method used to damage the boss is different for each phase. We start off avoiding damage as best we can, and before long, we must ignite these very conveniently placed rockets to launch them into Red. Normally, Spyro would flame these rockets, but Hunter can still ignite them with either his regular arrows or ground pounds, just like he can with fireworks. This gets us into phase two. We dodge more of Mecha Red's attacks, but in order to damage Red now, we must zap these nodes with Spyro's electric breath. There's no other way around this. None of Hunter's attacks can simulate electric damage at all. In fact, no other attack in the entire game from any other character can simulate electric damage at all. Not Blink's lasers or bombs, not Sergeant Bird's rockets or bombs, and Sparks can't even attack outside of his own mini games anyway. In fact, with some hacking, this phase has even been tested with the ball gadget and still no luck. This means that Spyro is the only character that can get by phase two. Of course, this 
also means that we want to backtrack all the way through Realm 4 manually, again. All just so that we can swap back to Spyro once more. We weren't this far through Realm 4 last time we had to get Hunter out, so the start of our backtrack is new. We had to use ledge clips to bypass a few doors to get here, so we'll need to use another ledge clip to bypass them once again from this side. Just before the first locked door, there is a pit with a platform that drops down. Once it drops down, we can get a ledge clip above it. From here, we need to carefully seam walk all the way around the room until we're on the other side. We can use an optimal double jump to just land on top of one of the door frames. And from here, we can double jump into the next room to get back into the dark mines. And no, that wasn't easy. Backtracking from here is simple and can be done in the exact same way we did the first time. Once we get Sparrow back into Realm 4, we can use a shock pad to teleport all the way to the end of the level and go straight into the boss fight with Mecha Red. Sparrow is able to get through phases 1 and 2 with no problems whatsoever, but phase 3 isn't so simple. Several platforms will rise up around the arena, and all but one of them has a robot on it that's armed with a laser gun. If we wait too long, the robot will shoot us, but the one platform without a robot has a button on it. Hitting that button will make the robot shoot red instead, and this is the only way to deal damage to red in this phase. The problem here is that just like with all buttons in the game, they need to be ground pounded, or in Spyro's case, horn dived. And as you know, Spyro can't horn dive without double jumping, and he can't double jump without using his wings. You see the problem? So, only Spyro can get through Mecha Red's Phase 2, and only Hunter or Blink can get through Mecha Red's Phase 3. There's no way of swapping characters mid-battle, and even if we clipped our way outside of the arena during Phase 2, smuggling in another character would just reset the boss fight from the beginning. Our current overall completion percentage is currently stuck at 99%, and defeating Mecha Red within our rules is impossible. But what's the fewest double jumps we need? Well, in the third phase, it's intended that we horn dive the button a total of three times. This is due to the amount of damage that the robots deal to Mecha Red being fairly static by default. So you'll have to hit the button two more times for the robots to eventually deal enough damage to defeat Mecha Red. The robots are only raised up for less than 20 seconds. So even if we hit the button as soon as possible, each robot would only get around about four shots off before the platforms lower again. However, it is possible to get the robots to fire more rapidly. If we zap a robot with our electric breath directly after it shoots red, it will be stunned for a second, and then it will fire again right away. If we quickly zap a robot after every shot it takes, its rate of fire increases dramatically. If we can use this to get enough damage on red at the start of phase 3, then we'll only need to hit the button once. It's not enough to focus our zaps on one single robot though. For optimal damage, we need to focus on two robots at the same time. Here's how we did it. When phase three starts, we need to get lucky and hope that the button platform is close to us. The platform it's on is RNG, but with trial and error, it will eventually spawn close to us. We need to hit the button as soon as possible to give us the maximum time. The robots begin to shoot red immediately afterwards. So we zap the robot directly to our right straight away to make it fire again. We zap it a second time after its second shot, whilst we also quickly get in between two of the robots. Now we need to zap the robot on the left after it fires and rotate clockwise at the same time. This causes our electricity to hit the robot on the right of us as well. If the timing is right, we should hit the second robot right after it fires. We need to repeat this zap and spin in a rhythm with a slight pause between each time we do it. If we time it perfectly every time, we can only just deplete the rest of Red's health bar in one side. If we miss either robot just once, or if we're too slow, or if we're too fast on even a single spin, then we won't get the one cycle. After many failed attempts, we finally managed to nail the one cycle perfectly. We have defeated Red and completed the entire game 100%. Can you beat Spyro a Hero's Tail without gliding? Yes, but can you beat Spyro a Hero's Tail without using Spyro's wings? 
no, we can't. And all because of one single required double jump right at the very end of the game. Still, 100% completion with only a single use of Spyro's wings is pretty good, and I'm happy knowing that there was nothing else we could possibly have done to the final boss to bypass that one double jump. Do you know how I know there was nothing we could have done? It's all thanks to the modder, researcher, glitch hunter, Tassa, known as Ebb. Seriously, Ebb did so much research for this run, he tested so many things, and he taught me how to perform all the glitches you saw in this video. I can't thank him enough for all his help. In fact, Ebb has his own YouTube channel dedicated to Spyro a Hero's Tale. All the glitches, tricks, and oddities in this game are all compiled in one place, and I will link his channel in the description. It's the least he deserves. If you enjoy challenge runs on classic games, then you're on the right channel. It's literally all we do here. Please subscribe, follow our Twitch, and join our Discord server. We've also opened up YouTube memberships as an alternative to our Patreon. We'll appreciate your support, and you'll also get access to the challenge run videos early, as well as access to a secret Discord room where we discuss the challenges behind the scenes. Allow me to thank all of our YouTube members and patrons who have already signed up. They are... A Lazy Dragon, Anthony Carmack, Corey Zilligan, LED23, Stephen Foote, Tor, Bulletproof Mink, Code of Zero, Fist the Knightly, Floop, Griffey, Hydro Blobber, JP, Cat Suter, Patrick Ripley, Patrick Kudzia, Rocket Plod, Ross Tattershall, Sausage, The Great Mitchell, Tiggity Ritz, VV is Vicious, William Zingleman, Zero Talent, and of course our Twitch subscribers as well. A Lazy Dragon, Eilie Chan, Sis Renner, Crawling Relsa, Dino1303, Evolve Pixel, Finn Living with a Ghost, Heiki Joey14, Ham Scoffer, Henneman1, Itzel VV, Jesus Christ 00 AD, Jin0505, John Fitz49, John Von Basslake, Cami7, Mel3 Phyllis, Mechachonk Seal, Mel Phyllis, Miss Barbs, Spectrum Z90, Static Jokes, 10 Divide by 6, The Jammy Emperor, The Only Intruder, Tor ZH, Tauster, and True DK0. Thank you all so very much. Thank you for watching, and if you're not done watching challenge runs, then may I suggest our Spyro Wingless playlist, where we cover all the old Spyro games, or how about our Ratchet and Clank challenge run playlist? Both are linked on screen now. I put Ratchet and Clank on the end card because they're both Insomniac games, but feel free to browse the channel. We've done Dark Souls, Metal Gear, Solid, Rayman, etc, etc. Thank you.